And whenever you're ready. Um, Uh, let's see. Uh, Phyllis? I'm here. But you're able to hear us. Yeah, okay. Great. Yes. Yes. I see some of some people. Oh, I see you, Suzanne. Um, Phyllis, did we agree I'm sharing? Oh, I think I, did I do it the last time? I, I can't remember. Up to you. Uh, go ahead. You're in person, so why don't I let you do it? Okay. Are we live on YouTube? Yes. Great. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. This is uh, the August 17, 2022 meeting of the Hawaii Invasive Species Council. It's 1.04 p.m. Thank you for joining us. We're holding this as a hybrid meeting. So we're live here in the Kalanimoku boardroom in, Hon in Honolulu. So anyone who wishes to testify live can do so at this boardroom. Um, and you may also testify online via Zoom. And um, so please let us know if you wish to do that. Let's see, I think we're going to start with introductions. And let me just um, go around the room and uh, please uh, let us know your name. And I'll call on your first name, on your name, but uh, let us know your name and um, what organization you're representing. So to my left here, well, actually, let me start with uh, co-chair Phyllis. Mm. Aloha um, and good afternoon. My name is Phyllis Shimabukuro Geyser. I'm co chair of HISC with Chair Suzanne Case, and I am the chairperson with the Board of Agriculture. Thank you. And um, I forgot uh, when you do your uh, name and roll call, please let us know if you're participating remotely, if there is anyone else in the room with you. Oh, yes, I am alone. Thank you for the reminder. Okay, thank you. And then, uh, Mary Alice? Um, Waving here wildly, um, I am Mary Alice Evans, representing uh, DBED, or the Office of Planning and Sustainable Development. And she is live in the boardroom. Okay, I'll just go down the, the list here. Um, Chuck Camara. And you got to unmute. Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. Chuck Camara. I do weed risk assessment, and I am HISC support staff. I will be monitoring the chat and the YouTube channels. Thank you. Uh, Justine Nihipali. Good afternoon. Um, I am the CZM program manager housed in the Office of Planning Sustainable Development representing DBED on the resources working group. Thank you. And I, I'm not part of the council, so, but I'm still here alone. Okay, thank you. Uh, David Rodriguez. Hello, I'm David Rogers with the Department of Transportation. Thank you. And then I've got a 587 number. I'm not sure who that is. That is us. That's you. Yeah. Okay. Continuing down, we have uh, Rep. Nicole Lowen. Hi, uh, I'm a, one of the legislative non voting members and uh, chair of the House Committee on Energy and Environmental Protection. And you remote anyone in the room with you? I am by myself. Thank you. Okay, Kathy Ho. Hi, Kathy Ho, um, Deputy Director for Environmental Health on behalf of the Department of Health. Uh, I am going remote and alone. Thanks. Thank you very much, uh, David Smith. 
Yeah, good afternoon, David Smith. I'm the administrator with the Division of Forestry and Wildlife. Uh, I'm here today and uh, here alone. Thank you. Did you get all that? Okay, uh, Leila Kaufman. Hi, good afternoon. This is Leila Kaufman. I am his support staff, Board of Entry Monitoring Program uh, Coordinator, and I will be taking notes for this meeting. Thanks. Okay, Rep. Tina Wildberger. Aloha, Chair and Committee. Tina Wildberger, uh, State House Rep from South Maui District 11, uh, Legislative Appointee. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Griselda Simmons. Good afternoon. I'm Grace Simmons, um, Department of Health um, Vector Control Program Manager, part of the uh, Working Resources Working Group. Thank you. Um, Christy Martin. Aloha, Christy Martin with the Coordinating Group on Alien Pest Species and Chair of the HISC Public Outreach Working Group. Mahalo. I am here in the room by myself. Thank you. Uh, Michael Melzer. Yeah, hello everyone. Mike Melzer, uh, College of Tropical Agriculture Human Resources here at the University of Hawaii. I'm with the Resources Working Group alone uh, in my office. Perfect. Thank you. Did I miss anyone? Okay, it doesn't look like I did. Um, the first uh, item we're going to have is approval of the minutes uh, from the August. 30, 2021 meeting. There's a little typo in the uh, agenda. It says 2022, but it's an obvious typo. And so we have public notice that we're approving the minutes. Does anyone have any comments to those minutes? Is there any public testimony? Is there a motion to approve the August 30, 2021 minutes as submitted? So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? Please. I'll second as co-chair. Thank you. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Okay, I'm going to do a roll call vote. So please raise your hand. Okay, so that is Case. I need I need uh, the members to raise your hand. Okay, Case, Shimabukuro, Geyser, Evans. Who else? Up here. Rodriguez. Rodriguez. Am I missing anyone? Kathy. Oh, sorry, my view is. Oh. So, oh. all right. Is that good? Yeah. Thank you, that passes. Okay, we have our primary submittal here requesting approval of a recommended budget for fiscal year 2023. Um, pass it over to Justine. She'll run us through the first few slides. Okay, Justine, please go ahead. Great. Good afternoon, Council. Um, this is Justine Nihipali. I am privileged to serve as the chair of the Resources Working Group Committee, um, which um, we'll just briefly share with you the process that we um went through this year um, for the review and recommendation for the budget um, for FY23 for HIS. Um, next slide, please. Um, just very briefly for the record, um, just some background about the establishment of HISC um, in 2003 um, via HRS 194. Its intent is to fill the gaps um, between agency mandates or existing programs 
Um, and it additionally um, allows us to advance collective knowledge through research and development um, of new tools and technology related to invasive species management. Um, the funding that HISP receives is through the state legislature each year, um, which supports interagency invasive species projects and programs. Um, HISC staff disperses funding through um, intergovernmental granting processes um, and uh, eligible applicants include state, county, and federal agencies through requests for funding, which the resources working group evaluates um, annually before developing our recommended budget to you as the council. Next slide. Um, this is the uh, Cracker Jack staff and resources working group representatives from your departments who review, I think this year was 37, Chelsea, or 39 um, applications, which is actually a low year um, for um, how those, those uh, applications address the priorities in the five-year strategy, um, which I'll, I think there's a slide later. So we do thank um, the representatives from these agencies, um, including his support staff um, and University of Hawaii. Next slide. And um, this year, um, his support staff facilitated this funding process, um, starting with the call for proposals starting in May. Um, they also supported an informational webinar for those who were going to apply for funds or interested in applying for funds um, and issued a deadline for the applications for June 3rd. Um, our resources working group conducted our evaluations on June 13th. Um, and submitted our final comments, questions um, in, the inter, in the interim um, and submitted everything for uh, his staff by July 15th. Uh, we did conduct a resources working group meeting on July 28th and we are presently at our council meeting. Next slide. Um, so typically our role as the working group is to draft a recommended budget to you uh, for review and approval. Um, the process basically goes as uh, the representative agencies um, and entities evaluate all the applications. Um, final application scores are entered into a worksheet that Chelsea <laughs> carefully crafts um, and are ranked from lowest to highest scoring. Um, as you can see, the formula generates a recommended award amount based on the score, the recommend, re requested amount, and the total available funding that was appropriated by the legislature um, subject to uh, budget restrictions that are um, assessed as well as um, costs for his staff. Um, the resources working group meeting, which was held in July, produces a final recommendation based on a discussion. Um, this year, the discussion was structured primarily as um, a, a meeting amongst resources working group members um, on sort of questions that we had or additional um, prioritization um, based on out score outcomes. Um, the applicants are invited to attend um, and might, might be able to answer questions as needed. Um, but are, we're a little less involved in the actual meeting itself, which helped us as the working group to really focus our decision-making, um, which as you know, with, with the demand for funding um, is difficult <laughs> um, to do based on the amount of funding that um, you know, the state um, has appropriated. But um, it was a very good process this year and it was, that's a little bit of an adjustment from prior years. Um, and then your task today, of course, is to review our budget, uh, draft budget for approval. Um, next slide. So um, this is how we've scored the um, applications um, based on, as I mentioned before, the proposed project's ability to address the five funding priorities um, the resources working group members assess how well those applications do or do not address those five funding priorities. As you'll note, it's 45 points are possible. 
Um, additional points are determined by his support staff who are very familiar with the work that these applicants are doing um, and are in constant communication with them with project oversight for prior projects and or inquiries. Um, so there's additional six points that are possible based on relevance to sectors, um, which is why we have the broad representation um, as designed by the legislature. Um, the leverage funding score is based on what was provided um, in the application for a total possible of 57 points. And then I'm going to have Chelsea come in actually and discuss like the background on funding priorities and take the presentation from there. But I just did want to close with thanking, um, you know, the council as well as council staff um, who has really spent a lot of time um, to make hard decisions um, collectively and kind of think about a broad representation of all the challenges that invasive species have in the various sectors um, throughout our state. Thank you, Chair and Co-Chair. Mahalo, Justine, and thank you so much for leading one of the more challenging meetings um, that falls under the HISC umbrella, which is our resources working group meeting. You do a great job, along with the rest of our resources working group team, um, who is here present, a, a lot of them virtually, and then Rob Hoff um, with DOFA is also present. Um, so if council members or legislative members have any questions as we move through this presentation, I'm here as well as the resources working group members to help answer any questions along the way. Um, so just jumping back into it, the background on the funding priorities, um, what we've developed are funding priorities that are based on our five-year strategic plan. Um, that was developed in coordination with the coordinating group on alien pest species because we do have so much overlapping and our vision statement is the same vision statement. Um, and those, that strategic plan is in line with the Hawaii Interagency Biosecurity Plan. We're not recreating the wheel here. We're just focusing in on what priorities do we really want to move forward from the biosecurity plan in the next five years. And this was developed with our extended partner network um, through a year-long planning process. So the funding priorities that you'll see here are reflected in that HIST-DGAP joint strategy. Tweaked a little bit just because um, it needs to fit within our application process. But like what Justine mentioned earlier, our funding that's distributed um, and that we're so lucky to receive from the state legislator is there to fill gaps between agency mandates and existing programs and advance our collective knowledge and tools through research and innovation. And those funding priorities reflect that. So these are the five funding priorities um, for FY23. Uh, the first one is prevention and early detection rapid response for new terrestrial and aquatic invasions, management of inter and intra-island movement of invasive species, that includes both aquatic and terrestrial, implementation of large-scale control of widespread high-impact invasive species. Um, that includes new tools and technology, but it doesn't include classical biocontrol, even though it seems like it fits into that. That's only because we have a separate priority for that. So that's the next one, increase, increasing specific regional biocontrol research and capacity. And then the last one is maintaining an engaged and supportive community. Um, so these are our five funding priorities. And when Justine was talking about the scoring, those 45 points, which is the bulk of what an application can get, is based on that application's ability to address each of these five um, funding priorities. Chelsea, could I interrupt briefly? Um, there is a comment on YouTube um, saying that is difficult to hear you. I'm, I'm not sure what you can do about that, but uh, just a uh, uh, comment was just received. Yeah, no problem. Thanks, Chuck. Yeah, feel free to interrupt if there is any logistical things that are happening. Um, is that better? And I know there's a delay in YouTube. I'll move on and then just let me know if there's still an issue. So we did have some changes to this year's 
scoring. Um, there were no additional points for the inclusion of a management plan or strategy in the past. There was, you know, minimal amount of points if there was a management plan or strategy. We removed that, those points, but we still gave the opportunity for applicants to upload any relevant documents that could help evaluators when assessing their applications in that process. And these changes to scoring, those were all presented to potential applicants at that webinar that we did right after the release for proposals and also included on our webpage that talked about the application guidelines. So everybody was really well, well aware of these changes. Um, Justine mentioned that instead of having applicants select the relevancy to sectors, um, so that's where they could be like, yes, natural resources, agriculture. Instead, HISC support staff determine each proposal's re relevancy to those sectors. Um, and assign the points accordingly. That's just to help with consistency. And also that helps assist us with assigning proposals to those evaluators that have expertise in those sectors. Um, and then one of the bigger changes we had is that proposals that sco scored low based on quantitative evaluations would not be recommended for FY23 HISC funding and were not part of the resources working group discussion. That is just emphasizing that our applications are mostly based on the point system. So if there's a low scoring proposal, we immediately zeroed those out. Um, and resources working group members did have the opportunity to talk about those. And if they wanted to see those funded, there was an opportunity at the resources working group meeting to bring those projects back onto line, online. But for this meeting, we presented that to potential applicants. Um, and we're also going to be presenting those uh, proposals that were zeroed out to the council today. Um, so you can see that process and have any comments on those. So again, we had 37 proposals. Sorry, this first column here isn't accurate, it's actually associated with the proposal number and we had some blanks in there, so you'll see 38. But the total amount of proposals we received this year was 37. Um, that is less than we've received in years past. Usually it's around 55 to 60 proposals. I would say most of the proposals we received are you know, the folks that we usually get proposals from. And sometimes we get this stream of kind of random research projects um, but we didn't really get any of those random research projects this year. I would say that the amount requested per proposal has increased. And that makes sense because a lot of research projects, they have to deal with travel. Travel is increasing with the inflation rates, um, so that needs to be reflected in their budgets. Projects like the Invasive Species Committees, they are seeing, they've increased their entry level technician position salary to be more competitive with other positions. So that increase was in reflected also in their ask. And there's also, you know, just those random operational things that programs need to continue the work they're doing, like aging vehicles um, and maintenance for vehicles and base yard repairs and those kind of things. So those things kind of make those requests go up a little bit. And like the invasive species committees, they're still soft funded. There's not a lot of funding opportunities that they have to be able to do vehicle repairs or put in for base yard repairs. So that gets reflected into their HISC Act. Okay, so now we're going to jump into what we had available to go out for this competitive pro um, process for projects and programs. Again, we received 37 proposals this year. That equaled about $8.2 in the requested amount. Um, and I have FY22 over there, which is kind of hard for folks to see on the screen with the camera. But a, less than last year, last year was 99.1 million, um, but there was 57 proposals submitted last year. Um, so again, like I was saying, that requested amount per proposal is a little bit more compared to last year. Our appropriation from the state legislator, we have that 5.75 million recurring in general funds. 
Um, but we also received an additional $1.5 million, which is non-recurring, and 500000 of that during conference was stipulated to support invasive ant work through the Hawaii Ant Lab. Um, so we did get what could go into our pot as an additional $1 million, um, which is great. Uh, what happened in FY22, because we're in a biennium year with FY23, there was a 20% cut to LNR402. LNR402 is our account that um, has wild, our wildlife budget, our fire response budget, and also HISC funds go into there. So that account received a 20% cut that carried over into FY23. And that 20% cut was applied to the $5.75 million. Um, you can see what that amount is. It's pretty much equal to that additional 1.5 non-recurring funds. So with that, we break even, but we just need to remember that 500000 of that 1.5 is stipulated to go to support invasive ant work with Hawaii Ant Lab. We have a restriction. I went conservative on that because we still don't have confirmation on exactly what that is. I put it at 7%, and then DOFA overhead is confirmed at 7%. We also have our HISC support budget that includes uh, the work of the former Mamalu Poi Poi coordinator, who we're calling, we're moving her PD and broadening it into a research and projects coordinator. Um, also, the technical work of HBIN and our 643pest.org specialist and team, um, the weed risk assessment specialist and the plant pono project, and then Hawaii Ant Lab. So coming out of that with everything subtracted, our total available was around $3.8 million that was available for our projects and programs through this competitive process. And of course, we show this graph every year. We're hoping, you know, to get those bars a little more even, but you can see the blue bar reflects the total requested, and then the orange bar reflects the total awarded. Um, so still working on getting those a little more even together. And of course, as things, we have inflation, increasing salaries, um, we're just going to see those requests increase. So I'll pass it back over to Chair Case. Um, if there's any questions before we move into presenting on the recommended FY23 HIS budget. Okay. Any questions? That was a, a very, very good summary of the of the uh, very, um, analysis. Any questions? And and speak. Please speak up because I'm not I'm not necessarily seeing everybody's faces. I am not hearing any questions, so I'll continue. Okay. Let me prepare. <laughs> uh, okay, so now we're going to be moving into the table on our budget submittal worksheet. Um, so this is the fun part where I get to talk for an hour and a half, hopefully not that long, about the projects that were submitted and our recommended award amount that came out of our resources working group meeting on July 28th. I'm going to start with the projects that were not recommended funding. And just keep in mind that moving forward through all these projects, just because they're not getting awarded money doesn't mean they don't have merit. And you'll see that as I kind of provide a short summary of each of these proposals. These are all, this is all really great work and needed. It's just we don't have the amount of money to fund everybody to the full extent. So starting with lowest scoring applications, uh, this was an application submitted by Ko'olau Mountains Watershed Partnership for East Oahu Feral Goat Control Surveys. Um, there's been a small population of feral goats over in the Waimanalo area at the summit. There's been goat control eradication in the past, but from subsequent aerial and ground surveys, they found a remaining population, and this proposal sought funding 
to go in and do aerial surveys and then subsequent controlled trips targeting this new population. Um, this project, based solely on the score from our resources working group, was recommended no funding this year. Um, and there's also the Watershed Partnership Grant um, that helps support the Watershed Partnership, so we're hoping that um, that program could take on supporting some of this work. And again, I'll just say after each slide, um, we can pause and see if there's any questions. The next project was evaluating the use of steam as a non-chemical means to control common invasive weeds in urban areas. This was submitted by a researcher at the University of Hawaii College of Tropical Agriculture and Human Resources. It would just be another tool if successful to treat common urban weeds in agricultural or even urban settings. Um, again, the recommended award amount for this project, um, just based on a low score, was zero. The next project is the Birds, Not Mosquitoes Outreach Kits. This was submitted by the Kauai Forest Bird Recovery Project, um, and this proposed to create um, their actual tangible outreach boxes that focused on educating communities on the use of mosquito birth control to decrease mosquito populations and, and help the native forest birds. Um, and this is something that they would use at community or outreach events. Again, just based on low score, this is recommended no funding this year. Um, okay, and then moving forward, the next project for, that was recommended no funding is Hawaii Forest in your pocket, pocket using 3D models and augmented reality to create a Pokemon Go experience for the Hawaiian plants and animals impacted by invasive species. So their title, <laughs> I think, is enough of a summary. Um, and that one, again, not recommended funding this year based on a low score. The next project is survey of potential biological control agents of hollow scale in its native range. Um, this was submitted by University of Hawaii, CTAR, uh, and this is looking for a biological control agent in the native range where hollow scale occurs um, that could be brought in and tested. It's actually partnering with those researchers in the native range of hollow scale and doing the testing over there. Um, this was recommended not to be funded um, this year. Next project also submitted by University of Hawaii, CTAR. This is developing and disseminating an invasive pest extension program to the Hawaii agricultural community. Um, based on a low score, this was also not recommended funding. Modeling first records to guide invasive species biosurveillance in Hawaii. Um, this project actually coming out of the spreadsheet was recommended funding in the beginning. Um, and let me just give a little bit more information on this one. Here we go. So uh, this project, it would be using data that already exists. Um, to help enhance, an so enhancing existing HIST supported database of new species records by adding spatial locations, compiling a set of geospatial layers representing predictor variables, human related activities, infrastructure, and other drivers of introduction and propagial pressure, modeling spatial patterns of new introductions. Um, and they're hoping the spatial model will allow more efficient biosurveillance for species new to the state and individual islands. Um, so they wanted to team up with the Big Island Invasive Species Committee and test their system out. Um, like I said before, this was a lower scoring, scoring proposal, but after discussion with the resources working group, um, that it was recommended no funding just because the data that they we're wanting to use is not accurate, it's not updated, um, so that's something we definitely need to work towards, and it's also really difficult to identify all those drivers. Pathways are always changing, um, so there's just a lot of discussion around how accurate and useful this system would be, um, and possibly working with the applicant on how we can fine tune that and maybe put something together in future years that would be useful. Uh, hold on. Okay, 
And the last one that was not recommended for funding was actually a, a high scoring uh, proposal is surveillance and monitoring for rapid response at an area with frequent snake reports and recoveries. Uh, this was submitted by USDA Wildlife, um, who we've worked with quite a bit in the past and funded a few of their different projects. And this comes out of the frequent snake reports over on the east side of Hawaii Island. Um, so this project was looking at setting up monitoring, different monitoring systems um, to identify you know, the, the pathway and the, the snake sightings and making sure we're catching these early on. Um, so discussion at our resources working group, um, there was just issues with legal mandates and there just needed to be a lot more uh, collaboration with the lead agencies, specifically Department of Agriculture, before this project could move forward. Um, so for that, that project was recommended no funding this year, but definitely because it was high scoring of high interest to the resources working group, we would like to see something move forward with this. And I'll pass it back to you, Chair, for any questions from members. Okay, uh, are there any questions at this stage? I'm hearing none, so please go ahead. Okay. Moving on, so we're moving on to projects that we are recommending awards for, uh, starting with our Mamaki Pest, uh, the Ramy Moth. So this project is submitted by UHC TAR. It investigates the di distribution threats posed to endemic plants and insects and potential impacts of resident natural enemies on Ramy Moth. We funded this project last year, and this is just a continuation of that work um, through Dr. Wright at his lab. Uh, his total requested 71,000. The recommended award amount was 16,726. Again, this was a lower scoring proposal, um, but we do, because it was funded in the past, we'd like to continue this work. Next one is the development of mongoose control technology and refining the Good Nature A18 mongoose trap uh, submitted by the Division of Forestry and Wildlife. The total requested was 50,000. Uh, we recommended uh, that amount being 25,000. This applicant had a scalability where they wanted to, they needed 50% or more to make the project viable. Uh, this applicant has submitted uh, for the last several years for this particular project, um, and his staff met with Good Nature representatives recently, and it doesn't seem like it'll take too much more to get these uh, self-setting traps into action. And this is just going to be a great tool that could not only be deployed in natural areas that need protection, but also biosecurity threats so at ports of entry, um, like on Kauai and Lanai, where we don't have mongoose already. The next application is natural enemies for biocontrol of albizia. Uh, this is again submitted by Tracy Johnson with the U.S. Forest Service. Um, this project seems pretty poised to move forward, um, so we put a lot of uh, the, the funding that we had available into supporting this Albizia project and moving, um, finding natural enemies for this invasive tree um, as a priority for biocontrol. Um, so total requested 237,000. Our recommended award amount is 100, uh, 100, $102,910. Um, and we did talk about our bi the biocontrol proposal submitted by U.S. Forest Service um, in as, as one. Um, so we kind of lumped those together for our discussion so we could figure out how we wanted to prioritize the funding for this. And last year, we definitely shortened the funding for biocontrol because there wasn't any traveling happening. And now that things are opening up, um, there's a lot of travel that needs to happen with these projects to go out and identify uh, biocontrol agents in those native ranges. Oops, sorry, getting excited. 
Uh, acoustic early detection of Koki using low-cost audio devices. Another submission from UHC TAR. This one looks at developing a uh, Koki Frog listening device. It's almost like an Alexa um, that will activate when it successfully hears Koki Frogs mating calls in the vicinity. This technology will also be paired with an alert system, so action can be taken in a timely manner. And so this technology can help prevent establishment of Koki frogs in new areas. Um, this researcher I know is working with Maui Invasive Species Committee, um, and he's also done a lot of work with this type of technology for mosquito detection with Department of Health and our Ports of Entry Biosecurity Program. Next one, biocontrol of invasive rubus. Um, so again, 118,000 was the requested amount. Uh, $37,657 is our recommended award amount for U.S. Forest Service. And then right after that is the biocontrol of melastomes and other high priority invasive species. Um, so this is a really great project with the Myconia butterfly, controls for Tibicina, Tibicina and Clydemia. Um, and there's also high, other high priority invasive plants like fire tree that were included in this proposal. Um, so total requested amount, 182,000. Our recommended award amount, uh, a little over 61,000. Excuse me, the, the rubus, is that the black, blackberries? Yep. Himal Himal Himalayan bird. Yeah, it's um, Himalayan raspberry and Elipticus and Nevanus. Yes. yes. Thank you. Uh, okay, so the next one we have How Do Harbors Jumpstart Algal Invasions? This is a submission from the University of Hawaii Life Sciences. Um, and this is looking at, I had to, I'm going to read this one because uh, I'm not good at summarizing it on my own. So it's identifying most harbors and inputs as nutrient impaired. Um, thus, vessels returning from, there's a really invasive algae called chondria tumulosa, or other invasive rich areas can jumpstart invasions by bringing invas invasives into these nutrient-rich waters. Um, so this proposal and the researchers can track this pattern by analyzing tissue from algae from impaired areas to detect harbor pollution. And so this project is looking at analyzing those tissue samples. I think they're looking at Honolulu Harbor uh, and Barber's Point as comparisons, and this can help lead to new policies for vessels that are inbound from, from invasive algae areas. And our Division of Aquatic Resources um, reviewed this and, and supports this project. Uh, so request, I'll, I'll just say what the recommended award amount is. So recommended award amount is $30,244 for that project. Uh, last one on this slide is detection and management strategies for the control of two-line spittlebug in Hawaii, which is devastating ranch lands on a huge scale. Uh, this project was um, supported with his funds last year. Um, so this is actually just... Uh, broadening out more management strategies, con uh, continuing to find um, new solutions to how to address this, this uh, major pest and help ranchers. The uh, total amount for this recommended was $167,700. Pause there. If there's any questions, I'll pass it back to you. Uh, any questions so far? Yes, on the Harbor Project, what's the difference between uh, that and the and biofueling? Bio is, is this so the this, water thing? So I think it would take into account biofouling by when they're looking for tissue cultures to test. 
Um, they'll probably be looking at some of the species that attach themselves to the hulls of vessels that are in these harbors, um, because what they can do is backtrack um, through the tissue samples where possibly that uh, specimen originated from. Um, so the policies that could come out of this research could help to address biofouling. And that's definitely something um, that DAR could work with Department of Transportation on in the future once, once this research is, is out there. Thank you. Any other questions? Oh, all right, keep going. Okay, onwards. So our next proposal is Tibicina control and Pectococcus ovatus dispersal, which is the strawberry guava biocontrol in the Koolau's. This was submitted by the Koolau Mountains Watershed Partnership, um, and it looks at continuing uh, the control of Tibicina or cane tea in the Pomoho area on Oahu, um, and then also includes distributing Pectococcus ovatus, which is the strawberry guava biocontrol, in a strategic way across the Ko'olau's. Um, the recommended award amount for this is just a little over 33,000. The next one is island-wide survey and development of a rapid assessment protocol of invasive macroalgae on, on Oahu. Um, sorry, I don't know why I keep flipping around here. Uh, so this project, it aims to describe current distributions of previously described invasive al algal species around Oahu in efforts to establish new baseline data for the island and to develop new rapid assessment protocols. Um, so we did fund, uh, I think this is the same project that applied last year and we did give a little bit of funding so it's just to continue that work moving forward. Again, um, submitted by UH Life Sciences, the recommended award amount is a little over $10,000 for that project. Uh, next project is Outreach and Extension for Rapid Ohia Death, submitted by University of Hawaii CTAR. Um, this is funding the outreach position that exists on Hawaii Island under the CTAR Extension agent, uh, JB Friday. I mean, they do amazing work over there with the community. Um, educating folks on the impact and also um, just the importance of not spreading and just doing really great work. So recommended award amount for that project, a little over 23000 And I think that was for six months' salary. Okay, next project is outcross and maintaining incompatible Aedes aegypti and Aedes albicictus mosquitoes. Um, I am, I apologize, this is actually, so this was a, a joint submittal from Department of Health Vector Control Branch and also Division of Forestry and Wildlife. Um, the award amount will actually be distributed to uh, DLNR, Division of Forestry and Wildlife, just talking with the two applicants if the award amount is approved. Um, so I should have put in the program included DLNR DOFA on this joint submittal. Um, so this project is just looking at maintaining and rearing. It would be for a position with the maintenance and rearing of mosquitoes and making sure that those mosquitoes that are infected um, with the birth control uh, have biodiversity to keep the genetic pool diverse. And so, Recommended award amount for that one, um, almost $48,755 for that project. Next project is Albizia Community Control Teams and Regional Eradication Efforts in the Koolau's, submitted by Koolau Mountains Watershed Partnership. Um, this is kind of a two-part project that looks at incipient populations of Albizia in the Koolau's um, and removing those before they can become widespread, like in other areas. And then also uh, with their outreach specialists, developing these community teams 
um, that can keep Albizia at bay in their areas and their communities and just raising awareness about um, the hazards of Albizia trees. Uh, recommended award amount for that project was $62,250. And moving forward, expansion and management of management and techniques for species of highly invasive genus Aravelia. Um, this again, UH Life Sciences. And this is looking at the invasive green algaes uh, that are really terrible and outcompete corals, algae, and seagrasses. Um, but there's different more morphologies um, and species traits, so that means different management techniques must be applied. So this, is, this project just aims to expand that knowledge of best management practices and techniques at different depths and at new sites. Um, so we funded uh, some of this work in the past with HISC funds, and then this is just kind of expanding on that information and getting new field sites. Uh, next one is educational film production related to invasive mosquitoes, Hawaiian birds, and incompatible insect technique uh, submitted by Division of Forestry and Wildlife. Um, this is basically uh, contracting a production team to put together a series of vi videos um, that will educate the public about this technique and the need for it and um, kind of very similar to Saving Ohia um, that was put together, if it, you guys are familiar with that. Uh, so recommended award amount for that, $18,481. Hawaii ballast water and biofouling uh, with the Division of Aquatic Resources. This is supporting their ballast water and biofouling planner position, uh, really important position that does a lot of work and we work closely with, uh, so recommended award amount for that is $78,000. And our last award, it's not our last award, um, but last four project awards is the coordinating group on alien pest species. Um, they do a ton of work across the board um, from prevention, management, control, outreach, all those things, recommended award amount for that project is $49,705. So that wraps up what we consider project awards. Um, those are usually under 300,000 um, awards. So we kind of look at those separately from the programmatic asks, which are the invasive species, which I'll get into next. Okay, uh, just, we'll just pause there and see if anyone has any questions on the project awards as described. Who's uh, managing? Is it, I just want to check the waiting room because I think we may have had to oh. switch. Anybody that we in the waiting room? Mm -mm. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Okay, we will we will move forward, um, and I'll just give a quick explanation. Um, so again, these are the recommended programmatic awards. Um, these are usually defined by uh, cumulative proposals that are 300,000 or more. Uh, that equates to our invasive species committees um, that will submit separate proposals. Um, usually they submit for a separate proposal for outreach, um, kind of the bread and bar butter of controlling and managing their target species, and then any early detection um, species. So that's what you'll see here, even though this looks a little confusing. Um, the application title, you'll see a few of them have a couple of different proposals that were submitted, um, but we just lump these into one conversation during our resources working group. And we also had each of the managers, the ISP managers, attend the resources working group and, and the ability to kind of talk, talk about their needs um, moving forward. So for the Quiet Invasive Species Committee, they submitted three proposals, um, one for rapid ohia death detection and response. As we know, they have both species 
of the fungus over there on that island, and it's even impacting Kokei, a really biodiverse, rich uh, spot on Kauai. Um, so they work really closely with Division of Forestry and Wildlife and other partners um, to respond to those situations. Uh, their next proposal was early detection, rapid response, and control. This is uh, the control and management of, of their target species. That includes myconia, koki frogs, you know, fire-promoting invasive grasses, um, all of that. And then they also submitted for their public outreach and education on Kauai, which includes um, the plant po pono, pono program um, that helps work with nurseries um, so they don't sell invasive plants and they're educated about that. Also partial support for their rod outreach special specialists and then, you know, just general community outreach. Um, so they, um, you can see their total requested over there for each of those proposals and our recommended award amount, uh, $659,677. Um, we tried to boost up their award amount a little bit because they are dealing with a new infestation of little fire ants um, that not only includes residential areas, but also natural areas near the Wailua River. Um, so this is going to be a major project for them in the future, and we want to make sure they have funding to delimitate the area and then of course, we're going to have to look into treatment, um, which will be another funding need in the future. The next project, Oahu Invasive Species Committee, uh, their proposal, early detection and rapid response for Oahu Invasive Species Committee. Um, this proposal includes the position. It's an early detection rapid response position. They usually work really closely with Department of Agriculture on um, those EDRR species, so we consider those like koki frogs for here on Oahu where, you know, they're not established, little fire ants, um, that person worked on niothrips when we had that in the past, and also rapid ohia death. Um, so that's having that person and also building up a team under that position. The next one, priority weed control and eradication across Oahu. Uh, so, again, this is kind of the bread and butter, uh, their work on myconia um, and other their other target species, um, so the management, control, and eradication of those species, and then their outreach and education on Oahu, um, their outreach specialist and outreach team that not only does access permissions so they can go onto properties and um, survey them for myconia and other invasive species, but all the great community work that they do. Uh, next one, Big Island Invasive Species Committee. Uh, they also had three proposals. They're mitigating invasive species impacts to the environment, economy, and human health on Hawaii Island. Uh, this is kind of their early detection rapid response proposal that includes um, targets like they have Albizia response teams because we know Hurricane Azel was a <laughs> Albizia was a huge problem um, during that major storm events, so they work hard at controlling uh, hazard trees around uh, important infrastructure and residences. Also, they continue to work with other partners on rapid ohia death um, and responding to that on Hawaii Island. And then their detection and control of invasive species on Hawaii Island, that includes, again, the, their main targets, control, management, eradication of those species and then their community engagement in invasive species education on Hawaii Island. So this is their outreach team that does a lot of great work. And it's a large area, so they have to move around quite a bit. And, um, you know, all these projects are in need of, um, you know, just those basic things right now, base yard repairs, vehicles. Um, so that was definitely included in their budget. And then uh, the combined proposals, which are both Maui Invasive Species Committee and the Molokai Invasive Species Committee. Um, two proposals, one is for their outreach teams to continue the great work that they do over there. And then the second one is for 
continued control, management, and eradication of their target invasive species. Um, so that's all encompassing for their plant species. Also, the little fire ant work that they do. I mean, they're the team that developed the aerial um, system to distribute the, the little fire ant bait that's like a birth control for Nuhiku, and they're seeing really great results with that. Um, so those are our programmatic awards. Um, I'll just kind of run through again. OISC recommended award amount 715,000. BISC 809,000, and then MISC and MOMISC again combined uh, award amounts of 825,000. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad I had like a giant latte today. Yeah, that's a great summary. Um, okay, questions, council members. Yeah, I'll just comment. It looks it looks to me like you got you got. Basically, the classic approaches of early detection, rapid response, broader control, and outreach. It's just they they just combine them in different ways depending on what their emphasis is on each in each county. Yeah, I've, definitely. Yeah, and I mean, there is if you're used to the HISC process, there is a little bit of strategy to how you put your proposals together to get points. Um, but, I mean, we evaluate the programmatic, the invasive species committees pretty much the same every year. And at the end, when we re they receive the award amounts, all their projects are combined into one. It's one proposal at the end of the day. Um, so it's just up to them how they want to allocate the funds with that best and final offer. They know what they're doing, so yeah, it's a good approach. Any other uh, comments or questions? Okay. Back to you. All right, we're at the tail end. This is just a summary of what that looks like. I just separated it into those programmatic asks, um, which are the invasive species committees and the total awarded, and then the project asks. So those are the smaller. Um, a lot of the research projects fall under that. Um, so you can see what those totals are, the total requested, which we went over earlier, and then the total awarded, which is what we had available funding-wise. So moving forward, this is in the submittal. Um, HISC is established by the Hawaii Revised Statute 194. Um, so you can just see what those are in the submittal. And then the recommendations for the council today. Oh, Phyllis, I see a hand up, sorry. Oh, um, what if you finish and then I'll, I'll, I'll comment. Okay. This is my last slide. Um, so this is, I guess, get over here. Um, so the first recommendation is that the HISC approve the FY23 budget for HISC support in the interagency project portfolio provided in attachment one, which is those tables that you'll see, and that should the Department of Budget and Finance make any changes to the restriction, which is what I have at 7% right now, on the expenditures, the HISC delegate authority to HISC support staff to identify the best way to apply additional restrictions, project funds, or to identify the best uses of any released funds and that if there are any changes in the scope or implementation of projects over the course of the year, the council delegate authority to his support staff to make adjustments to project funds or reassign project funds from any project that does not proceed in a timely manner. Okay, uh, Phyllis. Um, I just wanted to thank uh, the working group uh, on um, the hard work that they uh, had to go through to uh, rank and um, select, um, you know, projects for recommendation and also for the pro programmatic asks. Um, I'm, I just wanted to add to um, uh, the detection management strategies for the control of two-line spittlebug in Hawaii Island, um, you know, it's, it's not only a ranching and an agricultural pest, but I think that, um, you know, if this, this pest gets out of control, 
it could have consequences to conservation land, which abuts um, uh, pasture land. So I'm really pleased that uh, the working group uh, was able to recommend that amount of funding. And then also wanted to um, thank uh, the DLNR uh, part of HISC on um, Koki control in Waimanalo. I uh, just wanted to have the opportunity in this venue to say that um, uh, the coordination between the agencies are really lived up to the purpose of his. Mahalo. Thank you for that comment. Any other comments, questions? You know, I, I have a question about the programmatic ones. I, I'm, because when you when you go through the chart, they're they're so similar in those categories, and I, I just wonder how much effort it takes, you know, to write a proposal. I don't know how simple the proposal process is, but I and I don't know if this process is part of their strategic planning, so it's a good exercise every year, or if it's extra work because they've already like really focused in on their stuff. And I, I just wonder if if um, I, I don't know what the what the details of, of the proposal process is, but this because because this is our core work, and these are our core folks, and they have been for decades. Um, you know, something just like an outline form might be sufficient. Yeah, that's a really great point, and we've had this discussion with our resources working group members in the past um, because, yeah, the, we're filling gaps, and the invasive species committees fill a gap that has been going on for decades now, um, and we want to continue to support their work, and unfortunately, they're still soft-funded programs, um, and we want to work towards stable and long-term funding and institutionalizing them in some way. I would say our application process is very easy compared to other application processes, but at the same time, it is taking time away from the work that they could be doing. So this is a discussion um, we could have with our resources working group members in a debrief. We've also discussed moving into a biennium um, similar to what the watershed partnership project grant does. Um, they work on a two-year basis. Um, and so what they get in that first year, they'll get in that second year of the biennium. And that could help programmatic programs like the Invasive Species Committee just kind of prepare for whatever that second year and relieve some of the stress of going through another competitive funding process on top of all the ones they have to go through already because they're soft funded. Great. Well, I, I would definitely recommend streamlining it for, for them as much as possible. Yeah, definitely noted. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? All right then. Are we ready to take action? Right, let's see. Uh, let me let me um, see if there's any public testimony. No public testimony was submitted, but I'll turn to Chuck, um, just if there's any public comments through the YouTube or maybe even the chat. Uh, so far, no public comments submitted via YouTube or in the chat. Okay, then are we ready to take action on this proposal? Uh, you want to flip back to the yep. proposal then? All right, here are the recommendations, and so I will entertain a motion to approve the um, uh, submittal for the recommended budget for fiscal year 2023 as submitted. Is there a motion to that effect? Uh, Chair Case, I move to Thank approve. And is, there, is there a second? I second. second. Any uh, further discussion? Okay, if not, then all in favor, say aye and raise your hand, please. 
Aye. Seeing a case, Shimabukuro Geyser, O, Rodriguez, Evans, anybody else? Anybody else? That should be everybody. That should be everybody, yeah. Okay, that passes. All right. Then a uh, huge, huge thanks again to everybody, especially the working group. It, it is a painful process. Always a painful process. And thank you to the, our, our legislative supporters for providing this funding. It is really, really critical funding. Uh, and this is a good process to, um, you know, really make sure we have a deep dive on what are the most important projects to, to move forward on invasive species and, and the amounts. Comment, we have a comment from Annie Brewer from BISC. Regarding streamlining the funding process, this suggestion is much appreciated. <laughs> I didn't plant that. <laughs> okay. All right. I think with that, we are done. Uh, again, thanks for everyone for taking the time to, to do this and for all of the work that went into it, and especially everybody who's on the front line doing these projects. Really incredibly important work for Hawaii. All right. With that, we are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.